I represent a university art museum. We are a state university. And we've been collecting art for many decades. Our main constituency is young. They're age 18 to 22. And of course, this is a, a, a transforming uh, generation. Uh, so to have a painting that's 20 feet wide and eight and a half feet tall uh, is a unique experience for them. Uh, this is a generation that believes the world is on an iPhone, and uh, as long as you see a picture of it, you've experienced the world. Well, obviously that's not the case. The last thing I'd like to say is that uh, we are building a new museum at the university. Uh, Pollock's mural will be the centerpiece to this. We have a lot more of this type of art at a, in our collection, and we look forward to seeing every one of you in, in three years' time when we complete the building. So thank you. He wasn't well known, so it's really before he was famous. Um, but Peggy had some wonderful advisors, and they appointed her to, to um, employ him not just to paint a mural for her townhouse, but she also put him on retainer to paint a certain number of pictures over the course of a period of time, and she promised him that she would give him an exhibition at the end if he produced enough. We know from uh, postcards and letters that he wrote to his family and friends that he was very, very excited about this commission, as he should have been. Um, and uh, this was certainly the largest painting that he had been um, attempting to do at this point. And once he had the canvas stretched, he didn't know what to paint and, and um, had the artist walk, if you will. Um, and then the story that's relayed by Peggy Guggenheim and by Lee Krasner, who later became Pollock's wife, is that he had a brilliant idea one night and painted it very quickly in a very short period of time. And depending on which story that you believe, it can be anywhere from, I think 16 hours might be the shortest, all the way to 36 hours. So we knew that when the painting came here that we were going to be looking at some of these myths, such as, as that one. Um, and we certainly do, we'll, we'll talk about those when we, when we go next door. Um, this, I'm sure most of you know this, but the 43 date of Pollock, this is before he was the famous period where he was putting canvas on the floor, using house paints and industrial paints, very fluid, enamel-like paints, um, drizzling, pouring, splashing in, in that manner that we're all familiar with, probably. Uh, this painting is actually rather conventional in comparison. It's four years before the moment he went to this horizontal approach. Um, it's largely painted with oil paint and a brush. Um, the brush, as you can probably see in most of these broad, uh, very sort of dynamic brush strokes, the blues, the browns, the yellows, the pinks, this sort of turquoisey uh, grey-green colour. Um, however, um, there, when you start to look, there are clearly some areas where the brush did not apply to the canvas, so this separation of brush from canvas is starting to happen. Um, the reds, um, and in this area that I was looking at just now, these two yellows, uh, the dark yellow and, and the light yellow, that you see all over, this paint is diluted, it's really thin, it's, it's clearly being splashed at the canvas, it, it hits in spots, it often drips down the painting. So again, telling us that it was all vertical when this very fluid, runny, diluted paint was, was splashed at the, at, at the canvas. But we were um, quite intrigued by this um, pink paint here, which you see actually in many areas over, over the painting. But this is the area that I always point out, where it's, it's a very, very different look. It's, it has an enamel look to it, very glossy. It's tiny, very, very thin beads of color, curves, that areas where it actually does full circles or, or, or figures of eight. Um, and this actually looks very much like that later period when he was very, very fluid paint and finely dripping and, and actually drawing on, on, on the canvas from the horizontal there. So we actually felt this was quite likely, this was a ver very early instance, maybe the first or very early at least, use of a house paint with Pollock applying the paint horizontally. Um, however, we couldn't quite figure out why he would have done this. The, the pink paint is above and below certain layers, as you can probably see, so it wouldn't have been at the beginning or the end. Um, the, the location where he painted this was his New York townhouse, very cramped conditions. Uh, we know they had to take out a, an interior wall in the apartment to make space for the canvas to be upright. Um, there, there would perhaps have been space to put it down horizontally, but it would have really filled up that space. 
um, and given it's a stretched canvas on a stretcher, how he would have lent into to, to the middle and done this very, very delicate uh, um, paint work, uh, we were con uh, confused about. This white swirl is one example we pulled out. Um, actually turned out to be a casein house paint itself, a waterborne house paint. Uh, very, very cheap, uh, full of very cheap extenders um, and probably something that was lying around for his walls. Um, we don't really know why he used this in, the, in this area, but we do know it's a very uh, rapidly drying paint, would dry very, very quickly, and in most areas where he was using it, um, we think he's trying to gain back some of that priming that he was covering up with the actual paint itself. Um, we can't say with certainty this is the first known, no, we can't say with certainty it's the first used pollock made of house paints, um, which obviously then became much more important later in his career, but as far as we know, it's the, it's the earliest known uh, analysed instance of house paint, so we were very actually we were very pleased with that.